and the boulder slots down, jamming in between the two walls of the canyon, just like it had been. But now this time it's right in front of my chest and my hand disappears into this impossibly small shadow between the rock and the wall. I understand within the first hour, I'm not going to just struggle my way out of here. I'm going to have to think my way out of here. The brute force method doesn't, doesn't get us very far. It's, it's really these other tools that we might have. And the biggest one that we carry everywhere with us, thankfully, is, is our mind. Step one, define the problem. Yeah, okay, now I got that part. <laughs> But you stop, you think, you make some observations, you come up with some options, you make a plan. And so I begin making those observations. I, uh, I look here to the other rocks in the canyon up above me. Maybe I'd be able to, to somehow get my ropes around them to set up an anchor and be able to lift the rock off my arm. I, I've got carabiners I can rig up. I've got the know-how to make a pulley system out of it. As it was, the pain is, is almost irrelevant, really, because the pain is not going to kill me. The exertion, exhausting myself, that actually could kill me. Staying calm, maintaining a presence of mind. Sometimes you have to detach a little bit from those emotions. Because in that moment, that was where the boulder gave me the first gift. It showed me truly what was important in my life. For what I said on that tape, <laughs> And at the time, it was, it was still a tape, you know. Uh, it showed me that it was not the accomplishments that I had gathered in my life, the achievements, graduating at the top of my class from high school, at the top of my university class, taking a prestigious engineering career, or even leaving that career in order to follow my dreams, to, to live my passions, to become a mountain guide. Uh, none of that made the tape. It was to look into that camera and to talk to my parents, my sister, my relatives, my best friends, my loved ones, and bring them close. And to tell them, I love you, I'm sorry, thank you. I'm not really a, I don't know, a mystical person, I, but I understand, that, okay, this is an out-of-body experience, even as I'm having this this feeling, I'm walking down the hallway into a living room and I'm watching myself as though I've got these eyes like behind my head looking down and I stop <laughs> and there in the room there's a little boy, uh, maybe three or four years old. He's got blonde hair, he's wearing a red polo shirt with the collar turned down, playing with a truck on the ground and and he stops, he drops the, the little play truck, he, he jumps up and he starts running to me and I, I'm watching myself again like with these eyes back behind me and I see myself crouch down and I scoop him up. My left hand and a handless right arm. I bounce around with him, his, his eyes, his beautiful brilliant blue eyes, they, they, it's like they explode without a word between us, but the joy is there. Daddy, I'm glad you're home. Let's play. And then the next moment, poof, it's gone. I'm back by the rock. I'm, I'm still trapped. I'm shivering and shuddering and convulsing. But that little boy, that little boy changed everything. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get back to my family. I'm going to get a hug from my mom. I'm gonna, someday I'm going to see that little boy. And then that was when I realized that there are two bones in your arm. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, no stopping now. All right. Okay. Up over the top of the rock, and I'm, I'm levering and pushing with my feet. Crack! It's the greatest thing I've ever experienced in my life. If you could somehow manage to take every moment of joy and delight and pleasure and happiness that you have ever felt in your entire life and compress it all into one moment, one moment where it was all possible. You were dead and now you're alive. Not only that, to take it and multiply it exponentially by all the joy and the delight and the pleasure and the happiness of a life that you have yet to live, all in that same moment. Yeah, I can't believe I didn't pass out. The, the euphoria was mind-blowing. 